Hello everyone, welcome to Think Computer YouTube channel. In this video, we will talk about cyber safety. Internet safety, also known as online safety, cyber safety and electronic safety refers to the policies, practices and processes that reduce the harms to people that are enabled by the misuse of information technology. If you look at this graph, this is a data from Statista.com. Number of cyber crimes reported across India from 2012 to 2022. Back in the year 2012, number of cyber crimes reported were 3,477. That number has now changed to 65,893 in just 10 years. That is almost 20 times increase in the number of cyber crimes within 10 years. So what are the types of cyber crimes? First, phishing. This involves tricking individuals into divulging sensitive information like passwords or credit card details by posing as a trustworthy entity in electronic communication. Malware, malicious software designed to disrupt, damage or gain unauthorized access to computer systems. This include viruses, worms, ransomware, spyware and trojans. Identity theft stealing personal information to impersonate someone else for financial gain or to commit fraud, hacking unauthorized access to computer systems or networks to disrupt operations, steal data or cause damage, denial of service and distributed denial of service attacks, overwhelming a system, server or network with excessive traffic to render it inaccessible to legitimate users. Cyber stalking and harassment using online platforms to intimidate, threaten or harass individuals. Data breaches, unauthorized access to sensitive data often resulting in exposure of personal or financial information. Social engineering, manipulating individuals into divulging confidential information or performing actions they wouldn't normally do. Cyberbullying harassing, threatening or intimidating individuals through digital means often via social media platforms. Financial fraud using technology to deceive individuals or organizations for financial gain such as online scam or investment fraud. Now let's talk about safety from spam calls. So what is a spam call? Basically any call that you get from any unknown person whom you don't know and any service that is provided to you by that person that you do not want and if this call is going to multiple users then this call and the caller that is spam and spam caller. How to respond? Best way to respond to any spam call is to drop the call as soon as you realize that it's a spam call. Should we record a spam call? Yes. If your phone supports call recording then you should record the spam call and keep it as an evidence that can be used in case of any cyber crime that has happened to you. Don'ts regarding spam calls do not give personal information such as your full name, family member names, address etc. Do not share bank account details such as account number, IFSC, bank balance. Do not share identity card details such as Aadhaar card, voter ID card, PAN card etc. Do not share passwords. Never share OTP with anyone over phone call. Now let us see a conversation between a fraudster and Mr. A. So fraudster calls and says, Hello sir, is this Mr. A? Mr. A says, Yes, this is Mr. A speaking. Who is this? Fraudster says, I am XYZ calling from ABC Bank. Your debit card has recently expired and needs to be renewed. Will you please confirm few details for us? Mr. A says, yes, sure, ask. Fraudster says, is your full name Mr. ABC? Mr. A says, yes. Then Fraudster says, is your registered phone number 9876543210? Mr. A says, yes. Then Fraudster says, please provide your present debit card details so that we can book the new card for you. So Mr. A gives his card details at this point which includes card number, expiry date and CVV. Then the fraudster asks for OTP number 
which he sends in the phone number of Mr. A. As soon as Mr. A gives this OTP number, then the fraudster starts to take money out from the account of Mr. A. So this is how usually a fraudster will call and will try to get information from you. Now this is a news report which was published in Times of India. So with arrest of seven people, police have busted a countrywide network of crooks who had duped more than a thousand people by posing as customer care executives, representatives of banks, while the call center was being operated from Jamtara village in Jharkhand, the gang members were also present in Punjab. Now it is very important to report spam calls. You can use inbuilt caller ID spam blockers. Samsung has its own spam blocker called Haya. Google has its own spam blocker. So these are some pictures which I'm showing. The left one is the Google's dialer which can, you know, detect spam calls and show you this message, suspected spam caller. And the right one is Samsung's Haya spam call blocker in which you see there are four screens I'm sharing. The one first one is the number which is saved in your phone. Second one is any unknown number and it can say not spam. Green means it's genuine caller. Then the next one suspected spam and the last one which is a confirmed spam or you can say scam caller or a fraud. Don'ts. Do not use third party spam call blocker or caller ID apps. So if you download any such app in your phone and you use it, as soon as you start using the app, it will ask you for different permissions like contact permission, call log permission. And once you have given permission to these third party apps, these will upload your contacts in their server. And that is very risky because your contacts can be shared from there to different uh, companies and your data can be misused. Safety from spam mails. Do you know? According to Cisco Talos intelligence, approximately 300 billion emails are sent worldwide each day and more than half of these are spam. That's an unbelievable 150 billion spam emails sent each day. So this is how the spam folder looks in Gmail. So the left one is the picture of the spam folder, how it looks, where it is situated in the mobile Gmail app. And the right one is the spam folder and where it is situated in the web version of the Gmail app. So generally what happens, the spam mail is scanned by the email provider that is Gmail in this case and will automatically be sent or kept in the spam folder. Sometimes but it can still come in your inbox in the primary folder. So what are the steps you need to follow and what are the things you need to remember? First, do not reply to spam emails. Do not forward spam mails to anyone. Do not download attachments from spam mails. Never share personal information with anyone who is sending offers telling you have won a lottery or prize. In online world, when you are told it's free, remember, you are not getting the product for free. You are becoming the product. Safety while browsing internet. Do you know how many fake phishing websites are there? Any guess? According to Statista.com, it's around 1.6 million. That's a huge number. So how do we identify a fake website? Let's see if you can identify. I'm going to show you two screenshots, two pictures I'll show you. One of them is a fake website and one of them is a genuine website. You can pause the video at this point and then you can see if you guessed correct or not. Okay, so the answer is the website which is on the left side is a fake website and the one on the right side is the genuine Amazon website. And the reason for that is not the interface but rather if you look at the URL box in the URL box, there is a lock sign. On the left side, the screenshot which we can see, in that there is a cross sign on the lock. Means the communication, the transmission, this website communication is not encrypted. 
and it does not look like the URL of Amazon. It is the URL of the fake website. On the other hand, if you look at the right hand side screenshot, there is a lock sign which means HTTPS, it is secured communication and www.amazon.com that's the proper website, I mean the URL for Amazon. Few safety tips. Install antivirus software in your computer. Update your internet browser. Use a strong password. Change your password periodically. Never share your password. Don't save login credentials in your browser and check for HTTPS that is the lock sign in the URL box when opening any website. So what is a strong password? According to Microsoft.com, at least 12 characters long but 14 or more is better. A combination of uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers and symbols. Not a word that can be found in dictionary or the name of person, character, product or organization. Significantly different from your previous passwords and easy for you to remember but difficult for others to guess. Consider using a memorable phrase like six monkeys are looking and there is an exponent sign means cap sign. So you have special character, digit, uppercase, lowercase and the password length is more than 12 characters. Now you must have guessed the next topic is about safety while online gaming. Safety while playing online games. So there have been many reports in this matter. Web application attacks surged by 167% in 2021 with gaming becoming the main target for distributed denial of service attacks in 2022. Widespread issues include account takeovers, cheating mods and credit card theft posing significant challenges. In April 2023 witnessed a concerning incident where classified pentagon documents were leaked on a Minecraft Discord server revealing sensitive international information, controversies surrounding in-game currencies, loot boxes and money laundering highlight the need for comprehensive regulatory frameworks and global collaboration among policymakers and industry stakeholders. Safety in online gaming protects personal information like names, addresses and payment details from hackers or malicious players. It helps prevent account theft, ensuring players retain control over their gaming accounts. Safety measures deter cheating mods and fraudulent activities, maintaining fair play within games. Online safety safeguard financial information preventing theft or unauthorized transactions during gaming. It also prevents exposure to harmful content and cyberbullying especially important for children playing online games. So these are some don'ts while playing online games. Avoid sharing personal information. Don't click on suspicious links. Never share account credentials. Stay cautious of strangers and limit in-game purchases. Okay, so nowadays we are hearing about AI generated images. It is trending nowadays in news over social media. So let's take a test. I'm going to show you 10 images out of which some are AI generated and some are real images. Do not focus on the border of the image. Some are green, some are red. That has nothing to do with real or AI generated images. Numbers are given in every image. You can pause the video and you can write down all your answers. Let's see how many you get correct. So let's check your answers. So these are the images, one, two, three, five, nine which are AI generated, four, six, seven, eight and ten which are real images. Did you get it all correct? Please mention in the comments down below and let me know if you got all correct. 
सेफ्टी ऑन सोशल मीडिया द क्वेश्चन इज वॉट वेन वेयर टू शेयर मोस्ट ऑफ अस आर ऑनलाइन ऑन सोशल मीडिया हैव अनलिमिटेड नंबर ऑफ फ्रेंड्स एंड ऑल द टाइम वी आर ऑनलाइन शेयरिंग आर पर्सनल इंफॉर्मेशन पिक्चर्स वेयर वी आर गोइंग वॉट वी आर डूइंग बट वी नीड टू बी अवेयर एंड वी नीड टू बी knowing what to share when to share and where to share if not followed then it can create a lot of trouble and we can be victims of cyber crime so we have to understand risk of accepting unknown followers or friends never share personal pictures confidential documents over social media and there will be there should be legal age restrictions for using social media in india safety while downloading apps and games first download only from official sources such as the play store apple's app store or in microsoft store read the reviews of apps or games before downloading prefer using those apps which have a four star rating or higher do not download cracked versions of apps games from third party websites or servers as they may contain malware check for app permissions while downloading any game or app if you go to the settings of your phone there is a permission manager from where you can see all apps and what all permissions those apps have taken some permissions are allowed all the time some permissions are allowed only while using the app and some are denied or don't allow so you should look for any suspicious app which is asking for a permission that the app may not need that is according to you so that can be a risk factor cyber security regulations in india so here are the current legislations regarding cyber security used in india today the information technology act 2000 information technology amendment act 2008 Information Technology Rules 2011 Indian SPDI Rules 2011 for reasonable security practices National Cyber Security Policy 2013 IT Rules 2021 Reserve Bank of India Act 2018 The Digital Personal Data Protection Act of 2023 also known as DPDP and this is the helpline in case of cyber crime National Cyber Crime Reporting Portal NCRP helpline number is 1930 you can also register a complaint at cybercrime.gov.in